end of the day, it's meaningless. He said, it's all meaningless. All this stuff that we're building on earth, it's all meaningless. So I'm not saying, like, I, I truly enjoy being an entrepreneur. I'm not going to kill myself to get um, a whole lot of money because I understand I have, a, I have enough insight now to realize that once I get to 100 million, it's not going to feel like I think it feels. All right, man, let's get the show on the road. What's popping, everybody? Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. We're going to build a special episode. This guy is living up to his name. Sleep is for suckers. He got me in here the earliest I've ever been recording a podcast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my guy David in the building from yeah, Sleep is for Suckers. Uh, shit. Um, uh, what is it? Social Proof? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. This guy has been doing his thing for shit for like maybe i want to say like 13 years now right Man, it's been a minute brother i yeah. left i left the cheesecake factory 2012 so about 10 10 years okay yeah. Whew. heavy as crap. but you was but no so that don't count because you were doing you were kind of in in your entrepreneur bag while you was there you said you you needed three months to yeah. stack up i mean i've been in my entrepreneur bag since i was young yeah, yeah 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 yeah. like, like you know breaking leaves north, and shit like I'm that I'm a yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so you know it's snow it got to snow a lot to get out of school, but if you do get out of school, all my friends are like, yo, let's go play football. I'm like, no, I got a shovel. Yeah, These, my, look, my neighbors still got to go to work. I'm trying to get to this money. So. No, facts. Yeah, I've been an entrepreneur forever, though. It's crazy. Do you think the um, not having, not being in sports helped you get into that entrepreneur bag even more? Or Well, I was in sports, too. It's just I, I always prioritize a dream of building something okay. over sports. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah. That's. I mean, at one point, I obviously I had the life size poster Allen Iverson on my wall. You know what I mean? I wanted to, I wanted to hoop, but as soon as I got to college, it just became le the older I got, the less important it became. Wow, that's crazy. Because usually everybody like you, the, the further into it you get, the yeah. more the heavier the dream gets. Like, oh, I'm here. I'm in college. I'm playing at a collegiate level, yeah, especially. You know what happened? I was a uh, remember a company prepaid legal. I don't know if y'all remember. It's like a multi-level marketing company. Like, yo, I recruit three. Those three recruit okay. three. Like, I, I got exposed to one of those. And it was all these black people that's wearing suits that's getting money. Mm. And the more I got exposed to that, the the less I wanted to play basketball. Okay. I'm like, yo, I want to be that. I okay. want to be like a professional. Like, it's crazy. It, I wanted to they had these tie. Like, the, the tie. I never seen a whole lot of people wearing a tie, like a dope tie. I'm like, yo, I want to do that. I want to learn how to tie one of them. And I want to get this money like them. Mm. And outside of that, when you go into one of, those, one of those rooms, everybody respects the person at the front of the room. Mm. I'm like, I need that. Oh, wow. That's crazy because, like, I always say, like, getting into this space, I kind of got into it late. I wish mm. I would have got into it a little earlier because, like, yeah. sometimes you can just tell, right? And then certain people know things and they say things like, oh, I never knew that. Like, <laughs> even when I get into my music bag, because I, I interview a lot of artists, but a lot of people don't understand, like, I'm relatively new. Like, yeah, five years, but it's like, people want to talk music, and I'm like, I wasn't even listening to music like that. Like, bro, I was like, you feel me? I was playing sports, you know, sports players, we in our own zone, we ain't really paying no yeah. But yeah, damn, that's crazy. So, it's funny that you say that, because it was a question that I wanted to ask you before I go into the question. You got into that that kind of market, you saw, you was introduced to that marketing uh, side of things, right? And you liked it. Um, a lot of times, people have bad experiences with that. Do you think Though I'm assuming, was you a part of Wake Up Now too? I want to tail in before it uh, before it exploded. Right. So yeah. when and where I'm going with is, I feel like a lot of people that get into what is it um, affiliate marketing. Yeah. They they stay in it and then but they they are successful in like every part of it, like everything that come that's new. Yeah. They're able to to be successful in it, get out, right. be, get into the, right, the next right, new right. thing. But it's like the people that's not really into it. They always had these bad experiences. Like, nah, don't call my phone. Like, <laughs> <laughs> none of that. Like. Yeah, I was that guy. I joined every one, bro. Like, every thing like that, I joined it because it made sense, bro. Like, you don't have to build the company. You just got to sell the product that they have. Mm. Building a company is hard. Bro, I got – I have employees, right? So, just today, this morning, I'm going through my, my YouTube analytics, which I do on a regular basis. I'm looking at, like, some of the past episodes, and I realize, oh, one of those episodes ain't got a thumbnail on it. Mm. And then I looked a few episodes. Another one don't got a thumbnail. Another there was like five episodes in the last 
like month that don't have thumbnails. Mm. So I'm texting my team, why don't we have a, th like what's up? Like what are we talking about right mm. now? So like outside of, like there's there's the business. You have to market the business, you have to grow the business, you have to build the product, you gotta hire the people to build the product, but then you gotta like train and teach the people who's out there doing the thing for the business. And those multi-level marketing companies, affiliate market, they already do all that. You just gotta take this and sell it to your friends. That was attractive to me. Because mm. then I just got to talk to people. I only have to acquire one skill set, communication and relationship building. That's it. Damn, that's crazy. I think I got into that late again because by the time I got into it, I'm like, man, this shit not for me. We had a, uh, back home, we had that's something right. called Vector Marketing. Mm -hmm. Like they had so knobs. So like, man, you from up north, you probably heard of Vector. Yeah. They you, talk, you probably talking about a Cutco. Well, we cut go joint where they cut the penny with the scissors? well, not well, yeah, but I guess for us it was called vector, like okay. things like vector, like scissors and knobs or some shit, gotcha. like like the best knobs. And I tried that, and it's just like nah, bro, it's not for me, like it's not my <laughs> thing. So, but it's been things that I've been really successful with. And I want to ask you this question: Do you think it's a uh, like a goat gene, or you can teach these things to different people, and it can be just as good as you you are, or sometimes people just have to have it in them? Um, the actual ability to become successful that that has to be worked on for everybody mm. but is is there like a, a goat gene i i think the desire has to be embedded somehow into the fabric of who you are you have to mm. like want more i don't know how to teach somebody how to want more mm. but the skill set anything you do long term you get better at period everything gets better through longevity Everything. Mm -hmm. So if I'm if I'm playing ball, and let's say I'm uh, I shoot a hundred free throws and I make one, mm -hmm. I would bet everything in my bank account. If that same person shot another hundred, they'll make at least two. Mm -hmm. Because the more you do something, the better you get at it. Repetition. So if you are consistent and locking into one thing, and you're honing the skills and you're able to look at the analytics of what's going on, what you're doing, and how what you do affects the outcome. If you stay in that lane long enough, you'll win, period. Mm. It just is what it is. Damn. I ask that because, like, you know, sometimes as guys who, like, you know, have success, we try to have we try to get other guys to be successful like us or we try to build this team. And sometimes mm. the team isn't – well, the people around us aren't as driven as we are. Mm. And sometimes that can be frustrating. But it's like you try to teach them, but it's like – they just don't get it. Yeah. You ever you ever go through that? Yeah, but I mean, you would expect them to operate that way. It's not their dream; it's your dream. Mm. Why would they be as driven about something that you're building as you, bro? You're literally chasing a ghost right now. Damn, it's crazy. So, I, I I think not the country. I think that I just feel like I think I heard you talk about this before. I feel like if we all are good at what we're good at, mm. we can be great at that, right? So if you want to be a hypothetically, you want to be a cameraman, yeah. why not practice with me and, and put your hundred percent into it? That's your dream. That ain't my dream. For sure. That's how I look at it. But yeah. but I, it, the, when you're having that conversation with them, they know in the back of their mind you want them to be a great videographer so that it could build the Mr. J Hill show. Mm. In their mind, like you're saying, yo, you should be the best at it. You should be driven. But they don't have their own vision. Mm. Every single person on my team without exception. Like if you're with me for a little while, I'm going to start dropping seeds of, yo, we can build something together. Okay, my videographer Reese, right? He produces the show, he shoots the show, right? So I want him to be a better video videographer so that the show gets better. Mm -hmm. He knows that, I understand that. But I'm like, yo Reese, let's build something together. You and I build something together that we both own. Mm. And the skills that you have right now are transferable to that thing that we're doing. So we came up with this idea. It's like, yo, we need to do this. I'm not going to say the product, but we should do this. And I'm like, all right, give me a presentation. Like, put the pitch together. How is it going to work? What is your responsibility? What is my responsibility of the company that we're building? Mm. So now when we're shooting together, yes, he wants to get better, not just for the Social Proof podcast, but for the thing that we're going to be building together and to be able to continue to build this relationship. Mm. Everybody I talk, like, if you work for me long enough, we are gonna figure out something that we can do together. Because That's I hard. know, no matter how inspirational, it's still not their dream, <laughs> This is my dream. I want you to get good for my dream. <laughs> but now we can create something that we can work together and you get to leverage me and the audience that you helped build with your videography skills. And now all we gotta do is market in front of this audience, the thing that we're building together and that's your company. You'll be passionate about that. Mm, it's crazy, because I, I guess I thought about it the opposite, like kind of like, 
kind of Diddy story. I'm not. Yeah. No, I'm, I don't know if you're familiar, but you know he came up in Milltown. Yeah, for sure. But he had to be like a great A and R to even get a hold to these artists. Biggie, yeah. you know, what I'm saying uh, Mary J. Blige. Like he had for to sure. had to be great in that position first. Yeah. And I guess not. But that's why I never thought but about. If you that. Ask him. He probably didn't want to work for Motown forever. Mm, facts. Okay, I get that. You I know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, facts, facts. He, probably, he probably wasn't like, yo, I'm about to be the best AR so that I can be the best AR for Motown. Diddy, I and I don't I didn't never had a conversation with him. But he was probably thinking, I'm about to get nice because one day I'm gonna own my own. Ooh, facts. So you inspiring your videographer, he's probably if they are that driven, it's a possibility that he's gonna take all the skills and stuff he learns from you and he's out. And that's good, but that's good. For him. I would hope that. <laughs> for him, yes. <laughs> like, but then you're going to be frustrated because you got to hire somebody else and go through the same process. You get them nice. You teach them how you want it. You teach them the philosophy. You inspire them, motivate them. They get to the top of their game, and they out. See, You'll be raising a bunch of ditties that leave you. I think I got to uh, build my community. You talk about this a lot. but I say that because I, I wouldn't be mad if somebody left me – like and became greater yeah. a lot of times people leave for what they think is better opportunities or they leave because they're not committed and that's what frustrates me but like i've had people where like we've left and like i left them better than i was and yeah. it was then i found them and it's like yeah. shit i'm okay with that yeah you should be. it makes it easier to get somebody else because i could be like look at the, like i we did this again. it'll make it easier but because you still got to find somebody with a different personality a mm. different skill set you got to teach them the the way jay hill does things around here. okay i'm ha bro i have so bro i got mad people that have worked with me and now they're doing amazing things mm. i'm okay with that right it's not it's not easy though i prefer we keep building together right. i'm happy for yeah, you yeah, for I get sure it, I get it. <laughs> but like but the good thing about like you and i is it's going to be easier for us to find one of them than it is for them to find one of us. Mm. It'd be easier for you to replace them. Mm. It's going to be hard for them to find somebody as driven as you and learn from you. Wow. So I keep that in mind. Like, we're going to get there anyway. Mm. Like, you and I are going to get there. Where are we going? We're going there, no matter who's on the team. I, mm. I, tell, my, I tell my team, like, yo, I'm not – I'm I'm going to go to the mountaintop with or without you. Regardless. I want you to understand that. There's nobody here. I'll have the meeting and say, yo, there's nobody here that I need for my success. Mm, mm, mm. I need all of you to become successful, but individually, because of who I am and the time I spent in this game, mm. I'm going there. Regardless. You can come with me or not, but I don't ever want you to get so arrogant that you think that like the success of this company is hinged on you. Mm. You can grow here. You can build with me, but we're going to go anyway. Mm. So that's why you'll probably have a whole bunch of people like, yo, Jay, I can work with you. Yo, do you ever get lost in that that mindset sometimes? What you mean? Like, you know, like you understanding the vision, you seeing the vision, but everybody else not seeing the vision, even the closest people to you. They'll never see the vision, bro. They'll and never I, see the whole vision. You don't even see the vision as clear as you're gonna see it next year. Nah, facts. I I mean I have a vision, but it's not like crystal clear. I'm still refining it and working on it. So but you don't get fresher, like, you, you don't have that burning desi desire in you still, like, or did you ever have it? Like, where it's like, man, I know I'm, I'm going to get there, I'm going to get there, and people just need to just, just, just see it. They don't see it, they don't yeah. see it. No, well, I don't, I don't try to get people to see it. Mm. I just, I try to get people to do what needs to be done in the plan that I have already. Mm. So I, I'm not frustrated that they don't see the vision because I'll pay them. I pay you to do this job. The reason I'm paying you to do this job is because this is an instrumental part to this vision that I have. Facts. I, I'm not pressed on everybody. But before the that, though, right? Mm -hmm. It was a point where you probably couldn't. Pay, well, you've been doing this on your thing, bro. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, he was, I'm yeah. going after it. Yeah. Period. I don't care who's there. I'm not trying to impart no vision to nobody. Listen, I am going to. I'm going to work. So, right now, mm -hmm. right now. You said your videographers and your engineers probably sleep. Well, they they probably downstairs now, but I'm not going to get them. <laughs> they just you set me. it up yourself. Yeah. You are going to get it done regardless. <laughs> you don't listen. You can get frustrated with them mm. and say, "Yo, man, y'all supposed to be on it." And obviously, you should have that talk to talk about them, mm -hmm. talk to them. But you are going to do it regardless. Mm. So, me trying to impart a vision on everybody. Is draining from my ability to one crystallize the dream myself, but mm. two, just keep moving forward. I'm not worried about nobody else, mm. nobody. But that, not even let's x them out. But that, not worrying about. I think, like you said, that's a a a, 
a unique trait in itself, yeah. not worrying about nobody else. But that even can be frustrating because it's like sometimes it can come off as other things. It come off as cocky. It can come off as arrogant. Do you ever be f- frustrated with people misreading that, misreading your 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 motivation, your, your self drive? I don't care how people read it, bro. Like, yo, so okay. I, I say the same thing I'm saying to you to my team. Okay. Let's say there's eleven of them. Let's say three of them say, "Oh, he's so arrogant." Mm. Well, the other eight might say, "Yo, we need to stick with him because that's the leader we want to follow." I like we don't have time to think about how everybody else is thinking when about did, what we have to where, say. When did you arrive at that? Oh, you always been that. Way. Always been that way. Okay, so cliche question, right? But I feel like it could tell a lot about you. Like, what motivates you? Uh, the process and the journey, just becoming better. Mm. So I'm not. I'm I'm. I'm uh, ambitious, but not as ambitious as a lot of the people that I know. You know what I mean? Talk Bro, to like me. I told you, I'll be trying to be home by 3, 4 o'clock. I got a daughter at the crib. I set up my life to where um, I can be involved and build a business that I don't have to work so hard. Mm. Now, if I want to get to that next level, I'm going to have to work a little bit harder. But every day I decide, do I want to work a little bit harder or am I okay? Mm. I I mean I guess it's not that popular in terms of entrepreneurship, but I I am I'm complacent kinda. Mm. I'm good. I I'm good with incremental growth. There's nothing that I can do. Well, I mean I don't want to say it that way, but to go make a hundred million dollars. My man him five hundred. He was like he came to my my event and he was telling everybody, yo, his goal is a hundred million. My goal isn't a hundred million. Mm. I think it'd be cool to make it, but I'm not about to break my back doing it. Mm. Because I'm just not that driven. I want to enjoy the process. I want to enjoy my family. I lo- I hate traveling because every time I travel and I come back, my daughter is saying new words, mm. and I feel like I miss something. Wow. So, I, bro, I'm I'm just I'm ambitious, but I'm not that ambitious. You know what I mean? So, I'm, what drives me is um, just becoming a better person, becoming a better father, um, impacting more people's lives. I really enjoy that stuff. Mm. So, so I'm also, damn, it's crazy because like that's kind of like the opposite, right? Mm. And I thought I was about to come in and have this conversation <laughs> about because like you married, you have a family, yeah. and I, I'm thinking like we could relate in that aspect of like you probably losing time with your family, yeah. getting mm-hmm. lost in the work. Mm-hmm. But it's like, man, listen, no, I, don't uh, late night, <laughs> I ain't grinding late nights no more, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. All right, so what you can teach me is talk to me about the this aspect of thinking. Working hard versus working smart. I feel like a lot of us, the people that are ambitious, right, that are so ambitious, sometimes we get lost in working hard. Yeah. And I came down here and, like, I, one of my worst compliments that I hate to this day now is Jay is one of the hardest working people I know. I don't want that title no more. <laughs> I don't like it. It's just not It's, it's not smart. So yeah. talk to me about working hard versus working smart. How old are you? Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built Multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created the morning meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and winging in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me. This is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I see you there. I'm 31. 31? Yeah. Um, I'm 37 now. Mm. At 31, I was working really, really hard. Mm. So my, it's not that I don't work hard now. It's just I don't work as hard as I know I can. Mm. So I just make that decision every day. But my objective from from about tw- from about 18 <laughs> to like literally third, I would say 35, I worked really, really hard. Trying to figure it out, working on the skill set, right? Um, I left my job in 2000. I started Sleepers for Suckers t-shirt brand in 2010. I left the job in 2012, like October 2012. 
and I'm, I have a kiosk in the mall where I'm out there grinding every single day. 2013, I opened another kiosk. 2014, I opened a store, and I got all this stuff. In 2014, I dropped my book, and I started speaking and teaching in 2015, and I'm building communities. 2015, 2016, 2017, I'm still out here grinding. 2017, I get married. 2018, I'm still grinding, building this podcast, doing events. 2019, like, I, 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 I just got to a point where I'm like, yo, I... I don't want to work that hard. Mm. And I have a, um, I got a program called the morning meetup, right? Where I jump on a call every single morning and people are like, yo, every morning you are dedicated. Well, it's just an hour out of my day every day. Mm. I work five hours and it's almost a seven figure company. I work five hours a day, oh, five hours a week, one hour every day, Monday through Friday, mm. where I can impart people, impart like information to people. I only record typically on Wednesdays, unless mm. I have like something special going on like today. But I only record podcasts Wednesday, so I'll do like five episodes on Wednesday. Okay. But I've I've designed my life to where I can be effective, but I, it doesn't take all of my day or all of my time. Mm. You know what I mean? I think even that in itself, recording on Wednesdays is smart because I'm still at the point where it's always like, nigga, like when you record, oh, whenever you want to, uh, like <laughs> Wednesday, every day, I pack it all in the Wednesday. <laughs> and well, I used to be like that too, but then I realized. People just adjust their schedule to Wednesday. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? If that's when the store is open, they'll come to the store when it's open. So would you say, this is another question I have for you, would you say that you had to go through that phase to, of working hard to understand working smart? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Absolutely. And it's not like I'm, I'm like coasting because there are like time, there's like windows where I do work hard and I explain it to my wife like, yo, for the next two months, I'm going to be working hard. I'm probably going to be traveling a little more than I normally would. So it's like these spurts, but I'm not, it's not like every day, all day grinding, working. It's just, I have these these short runs mm. of, yo, this month, I gotta go get it. So the last few weeks, I've been working a lot harder. That's why today is what, Sunday? Mm -hmm. Today's Sunday. I'm doing this interview with you, and then I gotta go to my studio, I got two interviews. But again, I only record on Wednesdays. Right, so. But I'm doing Sunday because my baby's coming soon. Mm. And from like November 15th to about December 15th, I'm not doing nothing. Mm. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not traveling. Like I'm, I, may, maybe three weeks. I don't want to say the whole month, but for, for like three weeks, I'm not going nowhere. I'm gonna be at the crib. But it was like you. But even said you said it was a time where you were like just grinding nonstop, yeah, right? Yeah, and I yeah. think you even spoke about that when you was talking about just selling your shirts yeah. in an interview that I watched. And but you were saying at one point it was like you you learned that. Bro, like I'm not trying to be doing this. Like I'm just grinding, yeah. right? It's like it's I'm busy. It's kind of like yeah. busy work compared to being productive. Yeah. But I was listening, and I'm like, man, it's always easy to judge something behind us when it's behind 100%. us. 100. percent Right. So it's, it's always easy to be like, man, nah, that wasn't smart. Let me let me uh do this program, right? Mm -hmm. Let me let me have this morning meetup. Or let me uh let me do a a, a virtual learning class, right? Yeah. But I feel like. The grind kind of makes you credible. Uh, of course, you gotta go through that. That's mm. what I'm saying, bro. You're 31. Mm. Grind. No, no, no. For go sure, crazy. For sure. I just don't feel like it as much. If you feel like it, go crazy. Mm. Yo, Neo is probably uh, maybe like a little younger than me, but he he's the hardest working man I know, mm. and he got a bigger family than I got. Mm. It's your own desire, bro. But right now, 31, go crazy until you don't want to do it anymore. Mm. I woke up one day and I said. Dang, I don't want to. I don't want to be to everyone's beck and call when I record. So, it may be some sort of sacrifice. I don't know, but I only want to record on one day a week. So I know that I I have something to do every Wednesday. So I I just started it, and everybody started complying. And once you do it that way, it it becomes the routine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you start you stop um you stop like 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 spreading your whole week thin. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I just got tired at a point and saying, yo, I want to only record one day. Mm. So you'll get there, maybe. No, I'm, I'm I'm actually I'm getting there. I was yeah. just curious because I, I did hear you say that in the interview, and I was like, ah, sometimes, I feel like sometimes advice can be misleading because advice is really determined on where you are. Exactly. Right, so I was, exactly. I was listening, so I'm able to, I'm able to like figure it out and understand what you're saying, yeah. but some people, depending on the audience, they probably won't understand like, Oh no, nah, I gotta stop this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, I know I'm shit. I'm still grinding until I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back to let's say uh I, I wanna say something to that point too, man. Some things are taught and some things are caught. Life changing information is caught. 
not mm. taught. Meaning, I can come on here and say, all right, so this is how you run a successful podcast. Number one, you pick a day that you're gonna record. Two, you only have the episodes 45 minutes. Three, that's like step-by-step -step stuff. And someone might take it and say, okay, I'm gonna do that exactly. But through our conversation of saying, I just got tired and I wanted to design my life the way I saw it in the movie. Mm. Like there's a movie in my head, right? And that's how I want my life to be. Right now I gotta do things that kind of mirror that. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So one of the things was I'm gonna set up some sort of continuity program where I can meet with people once a day for an hour. I'm okay with that because then I got the rest of the day. If mm. that's my only business model, I'm good because in my head, I see me being able to go to every single thing that my daughters have. If my wife wanna hang out, we can do it. Lunch every day, like that's just a picture I see. So some people will hear this conversation and they'll apply something to their life, not something that I taught them, but something that sparked them inside of. So everybody that's watching this interview, don't take the information that I say and apply it. I want you to take notes on what you're thinking about as I'm saying certain things, and that's the life-changing information. Mm. Make sense? Mm. So, yeah, hopefully it's, I just want to clear it up. It's the me. public speaker in you. This is crazy. The way you deliver it is fire. Like, I'm trying to get that. <laughs> I looked at your TED talk. I'm, I'm like, damn, this guy's good. <laughs> so, but what, so, and, 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 and I don't want to get too lost in the business, right? Because mainly my podcast is, is more personal than what's going, what you're doing, yeah. right? Where did you arrive, when did you arrive at understanding that I want my life to be set up like this, right? Was it your wife? Was it, was y'all, what were y'all getting into little arguments at, at a point in time because you were working too much? When, when did you arrive to where you at now when you like, man, I want my, my life to be, I want this time for my family, et cetera? Uh, no, I don't think it was, it, I don't think it was that. I think it was getting in um, different environments and reading different books and um, mm. seeing people. I met a guy, I met a guy um, at an event that I went to, like his high level mastermind. And he told me he took 10 years off. He said like his health was deteriorated. He built a, I was eight, nine figure business, something like that. And he took 10 years off to care for his, his wife and his family. He said he was burnt out. He said he took 10 years off. Mm. Damn. Imagine that. He has, he has a, a, a huge company and he said the company runs itself. He said, I might peek in every now and again, but I ain't really worked for 10 years. He said, yo, I had to get my, my health right. He said I was way bigger and like, you know, I'm, he's like just, just fat and just tired. And he said he took 10 years off, bro. Mm. And when he said it, I didn't think to myself, I want to take 10 years off. But I thought to myself, wouldn't it be cool to be in a position where I can do that and still be okay? Mm. So I said, okay, now I have to set up my life to where if so, if I if I woke up one day and say, yo, I want to focus on my mental health or I want to focus on my spirituality and I want to just go. We're going to go to Mecca or we're going to be a missionary. We're going to like travel, whatever we're going to do. I want to be able to do that. Not that I want to right now, but that conversation said, there's a world that people live in where they don't have to work for every dollar that they make. Hmm. So I said, okay, I got to design my life in that way. Hmm, that makes sense. So I feel like a lot of things that, entrepreneurs go through especially as men i feel like the relationship part does play a, a part in it sometimes Absolutely. right like just because you know your woman one time with you yeah. she, quality times thing like that sometimes being an entrepreneur you get so lost in the work you don't have it to give or you don't think you have it to give yeah. did you ever see that in your marriage oh uh, yeah 100 yeah, how did you how did you deal with that uh communication mm. like i had to learn to tell my wife for the next two months I'm gonna work really, really hard. Mm. I gotta do some traveling. I'm gonna take some other meetings. It might be later nights in this two month period. But after that, if you wanna plan a trip after that, we can go anywhere you wanna go. You know what I mean? Mm. So I, I, I had to learn communication. I can't just be grinding. And if she's in the dark, her mind will go all kind of places, <laughs> right? Tell me about it. If, if, I'm not, if I'm not communicating, right. you know what I mean? So I just, I just learned to set the expectations up front. And it's still it's still not easy because even after you say it, it's like a dating a girl like, yo, I don't want to. I don't want no. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I know where you was going. I don't want nothing serious. We having a good time. You could say all of that. You could draw it out. You could sign a contract. Say, hey, 
you're not gonna catch feelings, right? What? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not your man. You're not my girl. We just hanging out. They're like, all right, cool. Right, let me sign the contract. Yeah, those good it's, times turn oh, to feelings, man. and you get what I'm saying. So I get it. Yeah. it it's crazy, <laughs> but and that's why I was. But it sounds like it's more than just communication, though, right? Because mm -hmm. like you said, you're you're not putting too much into. Not I don't want to say too much into your work. You know how they say too much of something can be bad for you, for right? It sure. can be detrimental. Yeah. It's not like you're doing this for a year, two years straight, right? Yeah. And because you could be communicating and you're doing it for a year straight and it's still like, bro, like, Absolutely. you can tell me all you want. That shit. Absolutely. You feel what I'm saying? So I think it's a part of that too. Like, yeah. not. I'm just saying it's better than it was. Mm. I'm not saying it's perfect. Mm. It's better than it was. And I just learned communication is one of those things that, that makes it better than it was. Right, right. There's some things I'll probably learn next year. Mm. That will make our relationship better next year than it is right now. Mm. So it's it's a there is no like I I'm just saying to the, I did not figure it out yet. <laughs> I, I think don't we know, <laughs> but the objective is to like just make things a little better now than it was. Mm. So I'm I'm learning some things. Is you your know? wife um an entrepreneur as well? Nah, she just started a uh, home health care business though. Uh, set her up with that, and uh, she's got her first client, so I'm excited about that. But when you first met her, she wasn't, on. huh? But when you first met her, she wasn't. No, yo, she told me she would never be an entrepreneur. Yo, she was like, I, she got a corporate job. She was working for um, <laughs> all state or some insurance company. I don't know. Uh, she was working for someone. <clears throat> uh, where was she working? I can see corporate the corporate job. It, it, yeah, corporate job. Fine. Yeah, yeah. So she's like, nah, I, I love my job. I got the benefits. I'm cool. I'm good at what I do. Mm. And I told her, you are not gonna like that job forever. Mm. I said, I'm about to expose you to too much. You're gonna see too much. You're gonna see how I wake up every day and I ain't gotta go nowhere. You're gonna see how I don't got no boss. You're going like, we're gonna do a bunch of cool stuff and I'm gonna put you around some other rich people who don't do nothing like, they, they, they don't have to wake up to a clock either. I said, eventually, eventually, just being exposed to it, it's going to change your mindset. She said, nope, I love my job. Yo, y'all can have that entrepreneurship stuff. And one day she came, oh, I got this idea for this business. And then she sees, she sees like what's going on in my world. And now going to work, it's more frustrating. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They can talk to me any way they want to talk to me. I got to be here. I don't want to go. I'm on a, I'm on a trip. I got to go to LA for a couple of days. And I'm like, yo, you want to come? I ain't got the days off. Oh my gosh, I ain't got the days off. That it's frustrating because she's exposed to something else. Yeah, Besides but. the. Again, outside of that business, right? Mm -hmm. Talk to me about some of the hiccups or the frustrations that trickle down from that, right? Because mm -hmm. naturally, as humans, we get frustrated and we take it out on the first person, we well, like yeah, the closest yeah, person sure. to us, right? Mm -hmm. Her being at that nine to five or or that that um, corporate job. That's not mm -hmm. saying nine to five because nine to fives are good if you got a good job. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, sure. Her being in that corporate position, under seeing that the not understanding the work that you got to put into, mm -hmm. but only seeing the free time or seeing the benefits yeah. of it. Right, talk to me about the frustration that that might have, or the tension it caused in the relationship in, in, in marriage. Yeah, she so think I'll do nothing. Mm. Yeah, she think I'm just out here hanging out. Uh, one frustration, though, uh, to answer your question, is I guess maybe my own arrogance, because out in the world, people listen to me, and I go to I'm I'm at work, and the people that work for me, they listen to me. Mm. I say something, and it gets done, <laughs> and then I come home. And I'm forgetting that this woman is my wife, not my employee. Mm. So there can be some tension there because outside of the outside of this house, I'm the man. When I come in the house, it's different. Mm. You know what I mean? So there's a certain expectation that I have of when I ask her to do something, if she's tired or doesn't want to do it, then... I can get frustrated because I feel like in my own arrogance, I deserve to have you do the thing that I'm asking you to do. Mm. And that's not, that was me in the beginning being immature. I'm a lot more considerate now, but um, yeah, that, that was a frustration. Mm. You know what I mean? But she didn't have any like frustration on you because it just looked like you had a a free day. Like, yeah, she just, I mean, how I do y'all get through that though? Like, it's, bro, it's, it's learning, it's growing, bro. <laughs> it's, I mean, I, I, I don't know how to tell people how to get through it, but I think the longer you're in something, the better mm -hmm. you get at it, period. If if you want to improve. You Yo, know I, mean? I think um, it's crazy that you say that because, you know, in the new day and age of relationships, it's all about, like, you know, like, self-care. And a lot of people think mm -hmm. self-care is running. 
a lot of times, right? A lot of running? people. Yeah, not what I mean by that is if something ain't working in my in my way the way I like wanted to work, mm -hmm. I'm out. Right? This isn't right. good for me. Yeah. Right? But like you said, the longer you be with somebody, the kind of the better it gets, right? Because you if you if if you're working, yes, if both of you are working on yourselves, so I stop trying to work on her, and I stop trying to. You got to think as an entrepreneur. I'm in the personal development. I read books. I used to try to get her to read books. Mm -hmm. I used to try to get her to see things in a certain way. You used to try to get her to be you. I try Almost. to get her to be me or one of my employees because mm. I'm trying to fix the mindset and how you look at things. But I stopped focusing on trying to change her and focus on trying to change me. If she does something to get me upset, in the beginning, I would focus on, okay, uh, like, why are you doing that? Like, why are you saying that? That doesn't make any sense. But now, these days, I'm focused on why does the thing that you say get me so upset? What about me is frustrating? What about what, about what you said is making me upset? Mm -hmm. Why do I feel this way? Mm. You know what I mean? So that's... So what about in those moments reverse though, right? So mm -hmm. I'm doing all the self-work, right? Yeah. Now I, I stop getting you to be me. Right, but maybe yeah. she's not doing that same work, right? And and maybe you grew from, yo, why are you saying that? To let me check myself, yeah. but she didn't, right? I don't know. I'm just saying, yeah. if if this could have been the case, are you? Isn't can, can't that be frustrating though? Like, isn't that frustrating at the moment? Because now it's like, yo, it, it kind of comes full cycle, right? Because now it's like, I'm looking at me. I think you should probably don't look at look at yeah. you. Like you feel me? Like yeah, <laughs> but um. I mean, I've made, I've made looking at me a lifestyle, mm -hmm. and every every challenge is to help me. I'm not totally uh, healed of my arrogance until the things that are happening externally stop affecting me. Sheesh. If they affect me, I, I'm I'm dedicated to, for this long term. Sheesh. And I'm trying again. I I don't I don't always handle it the best. So I'll when we're in a situation, I'm able to hold my tongue, but. Even that's an issue because I get um, I get distant. I kind of go into my shell. I rather say nothing than to like Engage argue. Into yeah, mm -hmm. that's not healthy either. Mm. So I'm actually still trying to learn how do I how do I express myself in a way where my expression isn't offensive, but I'm saying something at least because I'm really good at going into my corner. I go into my office. I'll I I just won't say anything. Mm. So. I'm, work, I'm I'm still failing that test, but um, I'm committed to getting better at it. But so. I think honestly, I feel like that's a lot of us men though, because coming up, I, you had two parent household. Yeah. Um. So I mean, I don't know, because like me, I feel like it came from a single parent house, because like every time as a child, when I would be upset or I would cry, like my moms would say things like, you know, like suck it up, yeah. or uh, like you, we couldn't really talk back. We didn't have the space to to talk back to our parents. Now we're creating a new space for our children to be able to express themselves and tell us their feelings. But mm -hmm. I feel like you could relate. In our generation, we wasn't able to, you know, saying how you felt was talking back, being yeah. disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? So as I got older as a man, I thought that, you know, me respecting you or me me growing or being a bigger person was me taking a step back and going into my corner when mm -hmm. actually that's a coping mechanism. Yeah. That's not beneficial for our relationship or my personal growth, right? And I think um, as as time go on, we continue to learn those things. Yeah. But like me recognizing that, like, damn, like this isn't good either. Like, yeah, yeah. going to my own cahoon, like that's yeah. not cool. I think I, um, I, I definitely, not even think I know, I got the trait that I have from my dad because I saw that. That's how he operate. Mm. I'd never seen my dad yell at my mom. Mm. My mom would yell at my dad, and my dad. Okay, all right, I'm just walking away. He goes into his office. Or I come downstairs, and my dad is asleep on the couch. And in my mind, the first time I saw it is, oh, he must have fell asleep watching TV. But then I realized throughout the day, my two parents will walk past each other and not say anything. Mm. Something's wrong. But I'm looking at my dad as my hero, so I want to model myself in every way after my dad. So... I got it from him because he's not going to yell at you. He's just going to go into his corner, mm. right? He's he, he's always done it. Or me and him would just, we'll walk out of the house and be like, my, bye, mom, and he'll just walk out. Mm. Oh, something's wrong here. This must be how you're supposed to handle it. Mm. Make sense? 
I always get offended. I remember uh, the uh, What's Love Got to Do It? You seen that movie? Mm-hmm. I couldn't even watch the um, the part where he would hit her. Like it was, I, I still can't watch like abuse like that. Um, it just internally it just hurts, right? Mm-hmm. So I would, I always wanted to respect women. I would never ever put my hands on a woman. I'm not going to yell at you, call you out your name, but I'll draw back. But that's, that hurts worse to some women because mm. they'd rather there be some sort of engagement. Mm. You know what I mean? So I get I get that from my dad. You know what I mean? Isn't it crazy how, like you said, this 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 life thing, not even outside of work, life don't even have a blueprint. Oh, right? No. We talk about work, but life <laughs> itself don't even have a blueprint. And it's crazy because when you come up, like I've come up in a in a um it's an environment when we seen toxic things in general, yeah. right? Like we're like we have no awareness to to hurt or abuse, like you know what I'm saying, like in any of that. And you go to being silent because this is better than what I'm used to. This yeah. is better than yelling. This is better than fighting. But not understanding that this is just as bad as well. It yes. can be just as bad. Is it better? You know it's I mean? crazy, bro. Because yeah. it's, it's just like when I got my relationship young, or I remember like. My goal was to always not to cheat on my significant other, right? Mm-hmm. That was like my goal. Like if I do this, I'm lit. It's a great relationship. Not understanding that it's so many layers to a relationship, oh, right? Goodness. That you can being faithful is just one step. That's probably the minimum yeah. of a great relationship. But <laughs> I didn't sure. understand that. So when I when I'm I'm faithful and I still having all these problems, I'm not understand. I'm not able to understand these problems. I'm like, yo, it, it got to be you now because I'm faithful. I'm doing everything I can when it's not. That's not true. Nah. That's crazy. Damn. <laughs> Not at all, bro. I wanna um I wanna go back for a second. <clears throat> sleep is for suckers. Mm-hmm. It sounds like you get in your sleep, at least your eight hours at least. Right? Yeah, it sounds I try. like it. Well, my baby, she Well It depends on how she feels. That's you different. I mean? <laughs> Why sleep is for suckers and, 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 and do you think that, that can be misleading? Um, yeah. Even when I started it, uh my objective was uh, building a brand for people who are willing to lo- lose sleep to get what they want. And it works for me. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm working all day on my job. I come home, work all day on my dream, and this is like, this is the grind. The only thing that I could take out of my life at the time was sleep. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, the, my, my responsibility with my friend, my family, friends, work, all that kind of stuff. I got these eight hours of sleep. I'm sleeping 10 hours sometime. I just figure I'll just scale that back. And it worked. Mm-hmm. Those extra hours that I wasn't sleeping, I was actually working, helped me get out of my job. Mm. But uh, through the process, I realized sleep isn't just sleeping in a bed. People are working really, really hard and still sleep. Meaning, mm-hmm. you could be grinding, 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 grinding. But you sleep to the fact that your grind isn't improving at all. You just working hard. Mm. So, if uh, Darnell Self said, "If you have, uh, if you do more of the wrong thing, you'll end up with more of the wrong thing." Mm. So you sleep. Some people are just walking around. They watch TV all day, play video. They had, last night there was mad people in the club. Sleep. They just drinking and partying. And they j- they just don't even realize how much time they're wasting. So sleep could be. Uh, Anything that you decide it's going to be, but for those those first years, I literally gave up sleep. Mm. I was working, just working. Mm. So, however, people decide. I mean, I, I had a whole lot of things in the beginning. Like, people say, "Yo, you shouldn't use that word, suckers," because um, schools won't let you in. And I know you want to talk to kids, but schools won't let you in using that word. Um, people aren't going to resonate it with it. Resonate with it. Um, I had you know educators and teachers telling me that, and and doctors telling me how dangerous it is to not sleep. But what I noticed was no one that was a millionaire at the time told me that what I was doing is wrong. Mm. It was all people who have like a job or aren't living the life that I want that was telling me, oh no, you gotta get your sleep. Mm. None of my mentors said, hey Dave, you gotta get your sleep. Make sure you're, make sure you balance your eight hour. Nobody successful said that to me. Mm. So I, I mean, this is the beginning of me not worrying about what other people think about. Me. Now, I do. I don't care. I don't. I don't worry about what people think about what I'm doing. I do have one thing that I do really. I do care about what people think about me. So that's one of my. Um, that's one of the things that really hold me back because I don't like when people don't like me. Wow. Damn, that's crazy. That's yeah. <laughs> I'm. I'm kind of the same way. Um, and sometimes I look at it like I look at myself in the mirror like I shouldn't feel like this. Mm-hmm. But you know, I do it. Sometimes we find out. We find ways to make our mindset work for us yeah. right so like um for me it's like i'm a man and 
one of the things you always hear amongst men is only thing I got in this world is my name and my word. Mm -hmm. You feel me? My name, my likeness, that's who I am. So not trying to impress everybody, but somebody not liking me, I want to do a digger dive into me because that's a part of who I am, mm -hmm. right? I can't go around the world and everybody not like me. That my reputation is done. Right. You feel me? So I want to be a good person, a good man, at least at bare minimum. Yeah. So and, and shit, it's crazy because even in that, it's crazy how sleep is for suckers. It ended up working for you, yeah. right? Because yeah, we can say that getting your sleep is important, right? But at the same time, you just named so many other things that substitute sleep, yeah. not being sleep, right? Yeah, so sure. it's like it, it ended up working for you and that, and that goes into the next uh topic i was going to is like, kind of like you know something is your purpose because it, it comes to you kind of mm -hmm. right like sleep is for suckers like at first it was like man sleep is for suckers i'm, I'm literally substituting my sleep to get my work done yeah. moving forward it, i understand that i could be wide awoke and still sleep exactly you know what i'm saying i feel like that was kind of like your purpose do you feel like that was your purpose uh purpose man purpose is a touchy word for me man wow. really um, because I, per ah, how can I say it? Well, what does that mean to you? Purpose, 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 purpose. Um, our purpose on this earth, right? Um, I am I'm really big into like my Bible studies and things of that nature. <laughs> um, so I crazy. I believe our purpose is mm -hmm. after it. all this is over to live in paradise. Okay, and there'll be some people that um that disagree, but. Um, like even in the Bible, right? So if you go to um, Genesis chapter two, verse seven, right? It shows that we're made of two elements, right? Dust of the ground and breath of life. So like our flesh and our spirit. Mm -hmm. Those When those two come together, uh, humans created. Ecclesiastes 12 and seven. When they separate, the dust goes back to the ground. Your spirit returns to God who gave it, right? And you can't return to somewhere you've never been. Mm. So meaning our spirits return to God. And where does God live in heaven? Spiritual beings that live with God in heaven are angels. So the Bible really describes how we were angels in heaven before we came to this earth. Solomon described it. Job described it. Like, it's just the objective is to, like, live a good life, honor God, and go back to heaven. Mm. So I don't care. I, I know that God doesn't care whether I'm a PE teacher or, an, uh, I don't know, a barber. I don't think purpose has anything to do with uh, my profession or making money. Okay. The purpose is to honor God, not break God's laws, and go back to heaven because we're not gonna be here long. No, I'm sorry. I thought I'm not gonna lie. I thought I might, I might have got it wrong. I thought the the whole purpose, just biblically wise, was to bring somebody else to Him. Yeah, hundred percent. To to bring Absolutely. somebody else to God, Absolutely. and and even that in my human flesh, right? I was able to <laughs> finesse that some way to work for me, and I think yeah. um, I started to say like, you know, if I can't bring somebody else to Him. The least I can do is teach somebody not to make the mis same mistakes that I made, yeah. right? So it's kind of like one and the same almost to me. That's what I was thinking. That's what I would say. Like, and that's why I try. I try to use my 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 platform to really show people what makes you human, right? Yeah. So we can talk about the businesses that you got, the events that you got going on, like shit, the seven, six, seven figures that you made from your podcast, yeah. and that's great, right? But I feel like you being here, people already know that, yeah. right? But what makes you human, like the things you go through in your relationship, 100%. right? The, the, the things you feel, you even spitting at those Bible verses, right? It's like, yeah. damn, like, that's who I am. Yeah. That makes me like them even more, right? And I think, Hopefully. I honestly think that's my purpose, but hearing what you say, I mean, I think it all can be, Kind of in the same. Yeah, subjective to what you, you believe. What you believe. Yeah. For nah, sure. Do you do you think that um just speaking to like the audience and teaching people, do you think that you being a motivational speaker, you having all this wisdom, this knowledge and um education, as far as like reading books, um you've been around so many people that make money like mm -hmm. yourself, uh do you think that can be a downfall to your personal relationships outside of work? Um, ask me the question a different way. Okay, I like that. <clears throat> You've been a motivational speaker. All right. You, your whole, it's like almost your entire life is kind of like helping other people, mm -hmm. right? Do you think that very thing, helping people, can be a detriment to your personal relationships outside of work? Because a lot of times when you're doing that, it's mm -hmm. work. You're doing a TED Talk, you're doing a podcast, you're giving people game, you waking up doing a, the morning calls. A lot of that is to help people out, but you're yeah. getting paid for that. Yeah. But sometimes in your personal relationship, your, maybe your your your, uh, your wife, your friends, they don't want that. 
they they not asking for that. It's like, bro, just be my friend. Do you do you sometimes find it hard, or do you disassociate with just being a friend versus a business partner? Um, uh, really, that's that's a really really good question. Um, I think yeah, I think anything you do will get in the way of something else, mm. right? I mean, um, if you're like, you have this podcast. If you start another company, right, it will affect your relationship in some way because it's like mm. less time with your girl more time here it affects mm. your relationship but um i think what what's happened now is my personal relationships are my professional relationships so it's kind of intertwined like the friend the people that i do business with are my friends and my friends are the people i do business with now i have a best friend my best friend in the world brandon that's my guy mm -hmm. he's not an entrepreneur necessarily but we get together on a regular basis. We play Monopoly. We go kick it. Like we go out to lunch. We go. We go kick it. Like we do double dates. He comes to my house. I go to his. Um, so I don't think. I think me being an entrepreneur, I don't spend as much time with my friends as I used to. But the time we do spend is quality. Mm. You know what I mean? Like if if so, say for instance, I'm I'm going out of town on an event. I can call Brandon like, yo, you want to go out of town? Yo, just, we just take a flight, get you a room, all that kind of stuff, take care of it. You good. That's just, It's just our friendship has never been predicated on what I can do for him or what he can do for me. It's just where I'm at right now, he's still my friend. Now, if you have some friends and you become successful and because – of your schedule because of the dream that you're going after, mm -hmm. you can't spend as much time with them and they get upset with that. Are those really your friends? Mm. Or do, are they only your friends predicated on what you can do for them, i.e. spending time with them? Mm. So I haven't, um, there's some obviously some friends that I still love that I, I don't get to talk to or hang out with, but I got a, a, another set of friends, those, we just happen to do business together. But like you said, right, you don't have to be sleep to be sleep. Yeah. Right. And kind of that. I kinda that's kind of where I was uh going directing the question. Even in that, right, I feel like you found some way to give us game. Mm -hmm. That's good for me, yeah. right? Do you find yourself in those spaces where people that don't even want game? Like if you with your wife, you spending time, or with yeah. you with your best friend, it's like you find yourself giving him business advice or uh motivating oh, no. him. No? No, 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 no. Okay. No, no, no. I mean, I've. I mean, I think that's a part of learning how to communicate mm. is identifying what people need. So when I'm when I'm with my wife, I learned a long time ago to stop coaching her mm. because sometimes she don't want coaching. She just wants to like vent and get get the stuff off her chest. And the best thing I could do for her is listen. Mm. not give advice mm. you know what I mean like my best friend it's not we're not talking about if he asks me a question I'm gonna answer it for sure or I see something I see some area that something I can say can help him mm. I'll give it to him because I love him that's my boy but all of our conversations don't be about business and you got to know when people want coaching and when people want to just vent mm. like just let them talk mm. I I I don't just offer advice just because you know what I mean. So Damn, that's I'm hard. With that. I feel like sometimes it can, it's easily to to spill over in our our relationship yeah. though, like I work. You know what I'm saying? This is what I do, so yeah. it's normal for me. Yeah. Um, I am who I am, but like when I go to my aunt's house, it's not talking about business. <laughs> I'm with my aunt. I she don't want to hear all that. Yeah. Shit, that's, I mean, I think that's a great attribute. Again, like yeah. you feel me? Sometimes shit, I'm shit. I get the rant, and it's like, bro, it's time to listen. You know yeah, I'm so yeah, used yeah. to it. Yeah. Yo, what? You just had this super dope event. Mm -hmm. um, shit, I think y'all even raised a lot of money. Like, it was crazy. <laughs> nuts, like, y your podcast is going crazy. The numbers is there. Where do you think you are in in life now? If you had to name this part of your career, what would it be? Um, ooh. Growth, maybe. Um, impact, impacting a lot of people. Um, I don't really know how to describe it. I, I, I don't I don't know how to describe it. I am I will say that I am I feel the best that I've well I can't say I feel the best that I've ever felt. Why not? I, um my mom passed mm, sorry, hey. last year, Damn. December second, and emotionally I've 
I, I'm still trying to handle it. And it's not like I, I think about her every day, but I know something something's changed and I'm still trying to cope with that. So I'm not as, um, I'm a, I don't know, it's, it's still affecting me. I can't put my finger on the effect though. I just feel that I'm different. You know what I mean? And maybe that's a part of kind of in my coasting where I'm leaning more into my family because my mom left me. Mm. Not she left me, but she passed. So I, I don't I don't even know how to describe the feeling that I'm feeling, but I know I'm different. Before your mom passed, were you spending a lot of time with your mom? Um, Yeah. Obviously, not as much as I, I feel I could have in hindsight, right? But I uh, moved her in with me, and, um, you know, I was trying to give her as much as I could and do all that I can for her, but all that stuff doesn't replace the time that you spent with somebody. Mm. So I wish I could have spent more time with her in her uh, healthier years. Mm. So, um, yeah, this, 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 this point in my life, I'm just trying to figure it out. So my mom passed. I have... My like I have my daughter and then my mom passed, so I'm learning fatherhood. Even though I have a a 12 year old stepdaughter, mm-hmm. my stepdaughter is 13. Yeah. Where yeah. yeah, we're gonna get together, bro. So um, yeah, she's 12. I'm learning that, and then I have a a 19 month old. I'm trying to figure that out, mm. and then we have another baby that's coming. So my we have a little baby, 12 year old, pregnant wife. I'm trying to figure all that stuff out. Mm. My mom's not here. I don't spend nearly as much time with my brother. Just built another studio. Everything's growing. I'm, tr- and like preserving my um, my spirituality, my my mental health, my emotional health. Mm. Trying to figure all that stuff out. And money can't solve those. <laughs> they this can't is, solve those problems. This is bro. where I was trying to go, mm-hmm. right? And it's crazy. It took some time, but we're here. And then, not even that, you didn't even speak on the time that you got you got people depending on you, yeah. right? Like, your success is depending on a lot of other people's success, all of that pressure. How do you how do you deal with that? You deal with it, bro. Every day, you wake up. You you keep you keep the vi- vision in front of you. Like, there's, you know, there's still more things I want to fulfill in my vision, um, but you keep going after it. Are you doing therapy? No. Mm-mm. You ever thought about it? I don't it? know. I, I think I did therapy a couple times. It never really. I don't know, man. I I don't, I don't know how um, a therapist. Not, I've never had anyone tell me that like therapy really worked. Well, people say it worked for them, but they can't tell me how it worked. So I don't know. I don't. I don't. I, don't I can tell you how it worked for me, right? And maybe it's it's, it's different because we in this space every day, mm. right? Um. So I was telling my girl the other day, sometimes I don't want to be the boss, mm-hmm. right? Sometimes I do want to just come in, sit in a chair, yeah. but I'm not there yet, yeah. right? But my therapist, I was able to speak to them and not not just the advice that they gave me, but them being a listening ear and, and being not only empathetic, but um, affirming in my feelings, mm-hmm. right? I think that really helped me a lot because a lot of times I am, if I'm not talking to people like you, I'm talking to people where... That's, that's not like me that I got to direct, mm-hmm. right? So people like you going to be like, just like me, man, we got to get it done. I'll ask you how you deal with it. We just get it done. That's yeah. not that's not healthy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not healthy, but that's how we think. And that's why yeah. I actually open like with the goat gene, right? That's how we think. And we're going to think like that for the rest of our lives, right? The people who working with us or for us, right? They don't get that. So I can't tell them to rest and chill. It's like, no, we got to get to it. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a cycle. We keep going through the cycle. So I have a therapist my therapist is able to say, okay, you feel like this. I'm like, man, you know, I'm trying to do this, da, da, da. Same way you explained it, right? And she'd be like, let's pause. Let's see where that come from. So the first the first, the first, first way to get over something is recognize that we have the problem, right? Mm-hmm. And see where we get that problem from. Mm-hmm. Okay, so my mom did this and I did this and now I understand it. Now and at least it, it gives me some fulfillment to understand, okay, I'm normal here. I feel this way because... I'm a man at the end of the day, so I'm a problem solver, but at least I can pinpoint it, yeah. right? At least I can be like, you know what, like you said, my mom passed, I don't even know, bro, like, you get what I'm saying? And just just getting some closure, I guess, to understand, to know, mm-hmm. right? It can it can feel so much better. So like, for me, that's what therapy did for me, just being able to understand that, yo, know, like me and my mom's ain't the closest, you know what I'm saying? She asked me a question not too long ago, and 
it was one of the best questions that I never thought I needed. And she was like, like, how do you feel about your moms, right? And it's such a cliche question. And it's like, I love my mom's dad, but I always said that. Mm -hmm. But there's layers to it. It's so many layers to it, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, I love my moms, but it's like we ain't spent a lot of time together when I was young. You know what I'm saying? I had to fend for myself. So as an adult, all I know is fending for myself. So it's nothing against my moms. I want to spend time to you, but out of sight, out of mind, I'm not used to it. Yeah. So I have to force myself to talk to my moms. I have to mm -hmm. force myself to listen to my moms when she's going on her rants. I have to force that because I'm not used to that. Yeah. That, I'm disassociated with that, so I know what I know. Yeah. And just talking to my therapist, and I think I cried because it's like, bro, like, I want that though. Yeah. I want the time with my mom. Like, it's crazy because as much as I don't have it, I want it. Yeah. But it's hard. That's yeah. like trying to go outside being friends with a stranger. I don't know you. Yeah, I, it just is sure. what it is, right? But it's like that's my mother. My pops passed away, and I and I remember like being hurt because I didn't have the time. Yeah. So it wasn't I was hurt because I had a time with him and we had a connection. I was hurt because I wanted to have the time. I wanted to be hurt that he passed, if that makes sense. Yeah. I'm hurt because I'm not hurt. Yeah. It's like, damn, I want that. What do you want more? Do you want the growth of your business or do you want a relationship with your mom? Uh, I mean, it's embarrassing to say to me, but I want the growth of um a generation and it's crazy because you talk about four circle i said this when i was 12 years old so my mom's in a, a drug addict or whatever my pops well i don't know who my biological father but the guy that stepped up he was a drug addict and he wasn't there right so i, I never forget i was 12 years old i told my mom's i said mom respectfully you wasn't nothing you know what i'm saying because she had me old too she had me like 45. Mm. i'm like you wasn't anything my father wasn't anything if i be nothing hey, did you say that you weren't anything I swear to god i yeah. put this on everything i said you didn't do anything, you feel me? My pops, I don't know him, and the one that is there ain't do anything. If I don't do anything, I'm a waste of a generation. Mm -hmm. So I find myself, my business is gonna create some type of generational wealth, right? Even if it's two generations, that's better than what, what I have, right? Like, cause my mom, I had to come from a big, my mom's came from a big family. She did drugs, so she was like the black sheep. So her, making her decisions made us the black sheep. So it was always just me and her until I was like 12, 13, I had to, find out on my own right if i if i'm nothing we were nothing as a generation yeah. i'm not going to allow that to happen you feel so me so you would, you would sacrifice a relationship with your mom for the growth of your business i mean i don't look at it like that but it is for the growth of my family to be honest that's how i look at it so you would sacrifice the growth of a relationship with your mom mm -hmm. for your if somebody followed you mm -hmm. for a month, they're with you every single day, and they gotta mm -hmm. come back and report. And they came back to me and said, "All right," and I asked the question, "Yo, is to the best of your ability um, in your assessment, is this person sacrificing a relationship with the with his mom to chase the growth of a business?" Mm -hmm. What would they say? They probably will say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, for sure." And you probably on the other end probably felt the total opposite. Like I would sacrifice all the success that I have with more time with my mom. No, no. No, like I mean, if that's the case, I would. Uh, if someone follow, if so I was. Uh, we, we were talking to like some of the brothers in my church, and they said, "Well, what's your number one priority?" We go around the room. They said, "Well, um, God is my number one priority, mm -hmm. then my family, and then my finances, mm. because that's the right answer." Mm. But if someone was to look at my lifestyle, they'd say my number one priority is my business. Then, like, kind of close second, my faith and my family. But my number one priority is my business. Mm. Because that's where I spend time thinking. That's where I spend time doing what I do. Now, I do try to display my faith in all that I do. So, you know, I'm trying to, like, just create this unique blend. But sometimes, even in that, that conversation with my wife, what I'm saying essentially is, I'm about to go get this money. Forget them kids right now. Mm. I'm not worried about them kids. I'm going to get the money. Now, will this money improve their lives? Not necessarily, because mm. we've got enough going on where I could literally not do anything with my obligation in the morning, Wednesday episodes, do nothing else, spend time with my family if that's my priority. But mm. we got to be real on what the priority is. But one, once we have these conversations, we can at least say, and I set this up with my mom, like, we need to do lunch on this particular day. If I can set a particular podcasting day, Wednesday, I can set a particular family day. Facts. So Sunday is typically my family day, right? But um, 
we we have like we have this baby coming so i'm trying to do as much as i can before the baby comes but i had to explain that to my wife mm. after this then i could say okay baby we're gonna do lunch let's let's pick a particular day if i can get my business the same respect i get my ch i'm in church all day on saturday and tuesday nights i'll never compromise that mm. so now i have to like put my family on a day right so i mean it'll be just as like, yo, I'm just going to call my mom every Monday at 10 o'clock when I wake up. That'll be my thing, and I set an alarm for it. Yeah. Or we're going to go to lunch twice a month, right? Let's at least give certain relationships the respect to have its own window mm. in our life. Mm. So that may help. I don't mm. know. So do you think, just going back to how you feel, right, mm -hmm. are you, like, intentionally doing these things because of – the loss of your mom or? Um, I think everything that happens to us uh, creates some sort of mindset shift that now, I think that's a part of it, as a part of the growth. Mm. I realize I I didn't spend as much time with my mom as I probably should have. So that's why bro, I'm home pretty much every day, five o'clock. No later than five o'clock and I'm there with my family. Mm. We're gonna eat, we're gonna kick it, I'm gonna play with my baby. I'm gonna get my daughter, and then we're gonna play. So I, I, I'm very conscious to get home by a certain time. Mm. But I think I don't know if it's just my mom passing. Like I'm doing this because my mom passed. But I don't want to lose anyone else close to me, and have to say, I wish I spent more time. Mm. I would hate that. So with all the success, right? You know, they say money isn't everything, mm -hmm. right? Like with all this success that you're having right now, some would say like you're at your, like your peak. Mm -hmm. You just keep going. It's still like a void that's missing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think there'll always be a void. For real? Look at, what? Look at Kanye. He got everything that he said he wanted. And there's a void. He nah, can't. no. He don't. What you mean? He don't have everything he said he wanted. Yo, he his was- His family a, is not there. He don't have his family. For sure. So he said he said he wanted to, uh, when he was a producer, he was like, yo, I wanted to be the hottest producer. Then he got that. Wanna then he wanted to be a rapper. He became that. Wanna yo, be Mm -hmm. Industry, uh, fashion mogul, got that. Yep. But there's always a void, bro. Like, so maybe the the going after becoming a billionaire, you gotta sacrifice something. He sacrifices family. I don't know the dynamic, mm. but this you you always have a void, bro. Mm. No matter, I don't care how like if if you have a checklist of ten things where you want to accomplish, and you want these ten things going on in your life. There will be something that there's there's some element of going after the thing that you want that you're going to lose. There will always be a void. I don't care how successful you are. I don't care who you are. Name somebody with a perfect life. I'll tell you you're lying. Mm. Damn. Always. Hey, but are you okay with that, though? I know you know that. You got to be okay with it. What you going to do? It's life. Mm. It's life. No one has a perfect life. Mm. Everybody goes through heartache, pain, suffering. Everybody. Everybody. I don't care who you are. Everybody. There's something going on. If you got everything going on outside, something inside is off. You might be at a perfect balance inside where you and your feng shui, but you don't have all the things externally that you like. Yo, you can't design a perfect life. You mm -hmm. got to be okay with that. And we'll be here for a short a, a short period of time, and then we leave. Mm -hmm. That's why I had to. I, people get mad when I start talking about legacy is overrated. Nobody's gonna care about anything that you built after a while. Look at Martin Luther King. Very impactful, right? I mean, got streets named after him. How often do you think about Martin Luther King? I mean, shit, there's a street in probably every city around the country. But you just pass it saying, oh, I'm going to make a left on MLK. But, but you're not thinking about the man Martin Luther King. But that's a impact. That's a super, talk about legacy. A hundred percent. Where is that? Make a right on Martin Luther King. That's a hundred percent, but you don't care. When you have Martin Luther King, like Martin Luther King Day, when you got it off from work, you're happy because you get a day off work. You're not watching old Martin Luther King videos. You're not trying to go, let's take care of his family. For sure. I'm not. But I think that in itself, to have things named that you have, streets named that you, that's a, to, to have, be celebrated in a way, even if, even if I don't think of him, it's somebody who might does, it right? It should be, but who cares? Who cares? <sighs> mm. Even someone that impactful. And the fact that we have certain freedoms today because of Martin Luther King. That matters, though. It does, but who cares? I mean, I care. 
kind of like, when we're speaking ta- about it. Yeah. When, we're, when we're speaking about it. Yeah, for sure. When we're talking about it. But even, I mean, I'm not, yeah, granted, I'm not going out fighting for civil rights or things like that because of Martin Luther King, but I yeah. definitely can be like, bro, I have somebody to look at and I can be like, this was done. It was done. I feel like even like I'm in a fraternity, they say you're only facing what other men have met. I can look back and I can I can point it. I can look to a book and say, yo, he did this. A hundred percent. So I, I wouldn't say I don't care. He did this and then what? It helps, it motivates other people to do it. He he He's, we said we don't have a blueprint, mm-hmm. but we can look at somebody who did it and, and had success at it. A hundred percent. So I, I would just because I don't care, it would be ignorant for me to say that that doesn't matter. But though. you should. I'm not saying this. I didn't say it doesn't matter. I'm just saying legacy is overrated. Mm. So in in so this is kind of like the pinnacle of of uh, legacy. Martin Luther King. Yeah. <laughs> right. We go out and build a hundred million dollar business. Who cares? Our family. Kinda, but eighty percent of um, all millionaires are first generation. Mm-hmm. Meaning. It's only a twenty percent chance that that money that you make in your time okay. is going to transfer, and your kids are going to be a good steward over it. I interviewed Dan Kathy, right? So, Dan Kathy, his father Truett Kathy, started Chick Fil A, mm. passed the business down to Dan Kathy. Dan Kathy grows the business exponentially. He just passed Chick Fil A down to Andrew and his family, so he got his family structured. This is crazy. But what he said was, he said, uh, most family businesses don't make it past the second generation. Mm. Most. They are an outlier, right? We all love Chick-fil-A. But who cares about Truett Cathy? Nobody knows who he is. Mm. Other Okay, his family. And if I got a chance to talk to his family, a lot of them probably don't appreciate it because they just grew up in this life and they feel entitled. And it's just who they are as a person. What I'm saying is... I can give my daughter all the money in, in the world and it's not a guarantee that she's going to do anything with it. And the fact that she won't have to struggle, I could be killing her. I, 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 I could be robbing her of an ability to build something. She might grow up super privileged. Mm. I might ruin her because I'm super successful. Damn. Legacy, who cares? Mm. Like all, the, the only thing we can do is... Um, it's in our sphere of influence, the people who come across us, hopefully we make an impact in this life. Mm. But after that, I was just watching, Wallow posted something today. My man said, um, he, he started painting a picture of what happens after you die. Some people can't come to their funeral because they got other stuff to do. There's gonna be a whole bunch of people laughing and joking at the funeral. Two weeks later, nobody remembers, life goes on. Your boss finds a replacement for you. Eventually, the person that you're dating will date somebody else. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with it, but I'm just saying it's a conversation about legacy is overrated to me mm-hmm. because after you're gone, nobody cares because the world changes. Mm. Damn, I mean, that's powerful. That's powerful. I know I'd definitely rather leave my children better off than when I started. Yeah, they want to be you, spoiled and financially? Yeah. Yo, Honestly, and you go to schools and talk to kids. You go to schools and like yeah, I used to. Mm-hmm. Man, go to them schools in the rich part of town. Oh yeah, I never did that. <laughs> never did that. You would think I'm talking about these kids driving Benzes, Mercedes, all that kind of stuff. Now you know the issues we deal with inner city, mm-hmm. right? As our kids, we go talk to our kids and our black kids, and you know what what they dealing with, right? But them kids in in the rich part of town, they're dealing with stuff way worse because they access to money, which means they can go buy drugs and they get high in school. They're getting addicted early mm. because they got the resources to do it. They feel entitled. They walk around feeling like, yo, they own the world because they ain't ne- they ain't never had to want for nothing. I'm afraid of ruining my child with success. Mm. So I'm, I'm 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 trying to be careful. Like I want to give my daughter the world. I want them to have. I want them to be set up. And but I don't want them to grow up entitled. And how do I control that? But we really have no control over nothing. Exactly. And I was talking. I talk to people that have kids about this all the time because we can we can pour as much as we want to pour in our children. At the end of the day, they yeah. got to make their own decision to be who they want. Yeah. Shit, I had a, I did an interview with Jess Hilarious, and she was saying like how you know she's changing the dynamic for her family. But what happens? What comes with that comes less time. 
right? And now her her, her son is complaining about not being able to be there for, yeah. for football games and things like that. But it's like, bro, I'm changing our life because but but then you change it, right? I'm there all the time. We don't have no money now. You you, you resent me because I wasn't able, I wasn't able to provide for you like I wanted to. So like I I think that's just the that's one of the frustrations of life. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like we never we can't really call it. We could do all we want. <laughs> it's not but I, well, I don't, I don't, we can't control as much as we think. Mm-mm-mm. Get what I mean? So yeah. and I, I think it's a conversation. This is a, a really good conversation we're having, especially in an entrepreneurial community. Like you're gonna spend your whole life going to get it because you think you're gonna build this legacy, and you're not. No one's gonna care. Mm-mm-mm. You want to take care of your family, but. In taking care of your family, there's drawback. Hmm. So what's the point of it all? Get to heaven. At the end of that, Solomon described in the Bible, he was like, yo, his major conclusion, he was the wisest, richest man in the world. Yo, he can have anything he wanted. He said the major conclusion, at the end of the day, it's meaningless. He said it's all meaningless. All this stuff that we're building on earth, it's all meaningless. So I'm not saying, like, I, I truly enjoy being an entrepreneur. I'm not going to kill myself to get um, a whole lot of money because I understand I have, a, I have enough insight now to realize that once I get to $100 million, it's not going to feel like I think it feels. Can I ask you this question, though? Sure. Somebody being not, I'm not on obviously, but on me phone right there. Being like on on my way up there, right? Yep. I know you said you got something at like twelve. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you, got you. Do you think it took for you to be successful to understand that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like I feel like it's easier. Like I think Drake had this famous line. I've been asking people this all the time. Drake had this line: "People with no money act like money isn't everything." Because yeah. easy to say that, like. When you don't have it, yeah, like when yeah, you yeah. got it, you understand it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, damn. Yeah, I mean, at, at, every time you get to the top of the mountain, you'll quickly realize that you're at the bottom of another one. Mm. And then once you keep doing it, you understand that. Bro, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a disappearing finish line. Mm. You get closer to the finish line, Move it, it disappears, bro. Like, yo, I thought there was a, I thought I was, I thought I almost, I was right there. And then you get into different circles and you see different things, you see different experiences, you have the, then you realize all the stuff that you can't do. Mm. It's a disappearing finish line, bro. Yo, this is a great conversation. I'm gonna let you get out of here, man. This is this Yeah, is, I agree. We gotta this, do a part two. <laughs> this I, is great, I enjoy man. It. I, enjoy I appreciate it, it brother. <laughs> uh Mr. David Shans, uh man, Sleep is for Suckers, uh Social Proof Podcast, great dude. We ain't even get into the business. <laughs> Yo, he, we'll do a part two. We'll do a part two. I enjoy this. Crazy. I sure. appreciate it, bro. We need this sometimes, man. Mm-hmm. J Hill, J Hill Podcast is right. We out.